And so I stole this slide from our, our sports psychologist and his presentation that he gave to our team. But basically what, what happens with adversity is that it puts a Y in the road. Okay, and adversity, when it comes, we get hit by it. Okay, and it leads to intrusive thoughts and emotions. And it can be an attention thief. Okay, that moment comes and all of a sudden now you're just thinking about the goal that you gave up or the turnover that you made or the loss that you had. Uh, but, or the penalty kill that's struggling. It's taking our attention. And when we allow it to, it can shift our focus down the wrong road. Or we can make a choice that we're going to have a laser-like focus on what we're trying to get done. And that gives us the best chance for peak performance. And we basically, we took this, this idea for mindfulness on our team, taking the right action in the presence of thoughts and emotions. There's a choice that unfolds. Your thoughts affect the way you feel. Your feelings affect the way that you act. Your actions affect your results. If you're having a result issue, you probably have to go back down the chain and take a look at the choice that you're making at how you're dealing with your thoughts. Because in the end, we all want peak performance. Okay? We want to commit all of our attention to what the current situation requires of us versus being distracted by the struggle that adversity brings going on in our mind. And in that is the power of choice that we spent a lot of time talking about with our team. So our adversity survival guide, we talked a little bit about planning ahead. Now this next challenge is to be the role model. And the way, the way this looks, you guys, is that discomfort is coming. We enter every season and we know adversity is going to strike at some point in time. Accept it. Lean right into it. Coaches, we have a habit of, of sitting back in a room and kind of talking about players and, you know, placing judgment. But the, the challenge is to be able to stay curious and be able to actually figure out what, what is the problem and how can we solve this? Because keep in mind, the players, they pick up on our energy. They, th we are mirrors for them. And the best example I could think of for this is, is my own failure. We're playing a team called Klagenfurt. And Klagenfurt versus Red Bull is something like Ohio State versus Michigan. It's definitely, definitely not to that level, but it's more than a game, okay? It means something more. And the referee in the first period, my opinion, made two really poor calls. I jumped down from the bench and as, as he's skating by, I let him know how bad I thought the calls were. And then the guys are like, hey, oh, we're doing this today. Okay, good. And then, they're, then they start getting on the ref, okay? And next thing you know, one of, one of our best players is sitting in the box in the first period, gets teed up for abuse of the official. And I, I went in the locker room sheepishly after the first period, and I just said, sorry. Like, that can't happen. And I apologized to the team. I told them it wasn't going to happen again. That's not our values. That's not the way that we treat officials. I let adversity take us down the wrong path. The attention thief took it. And I vowed to the team that I wasn't going to do that anymore. And I didn't. Chose different ways to speak to the officials. But if we create a plan, we should follow the plan. And be, hold ourselves accountable to the highest standard. Because remember, the players can feel our energy. They mirror our behavior. And so we want to hold ourselves accountable to the highest standard.